challenge of holiness in the 21st century. Challenge of holiness in the 21st century. We're going to take two scriptures before we start speaking the word. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Second Timothy 3, 1 to 7. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. In the last days. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the path thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse loss, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. Chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own laws, shall they give to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned to fable. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, we talked about holiness as our brilliant what? heritage from the triune God. The Father has it, the Son has it, Holy Spirit has it, and pass it to us through the word. And so it's our heritage. Holiness is the nature of God from generation to generation. That's why the angels have been singing it from ages to ages. However, in every age, there are one thing or the other that poses challenges, I mean challenge, to holiness. 21st century is the closing part of the end time. Because end time started when Christ came. The Bible says he, he died for us in the end of the time. So the end time began 2,000 years ago. So we are in the closing part now. That's why we see what is happening in Israel. That's why Euphrates is, is drying in our lifetime. Things are happening which are prophetically indicated. Praise God. So 21st century is the closing part of the end time which began at the first advent of Christ. Today, we have challenges that are facing life of holiness. And that's the area the Holy Spirit wants us to look at. But before that, let's look at importance of holiness in our Christian life. Number one, we must know that holy, we can't do without holiness. Why? It is the nature of our God. If you are going to serve God without holiness, you are not serving God. Because Holiness is what makes anything you are doing to God to be acceptable. It's the salt in our service. Among holiness, we have love there. Like what we have had this morning. Tomorrow we are going to talk more about that. But then, holiness is important for you as a leader, as a minister in the Christendom because 
That is the nature of God you are coming to worship. You, let me tell you something. How does jewelry come to existence? Has ever, anybody ever thought about why men started using jewelry? Let me give you to it. In those days, after men had departed from God, they are looking for a way back to God. And then they began to make idols for themselves. Idols of gold, idols of silver, idols of diamond, idols of any ornament. But the point is this. If your God is golden, you have to put on golden outlets, golden jewelry, golden everything, golden earring, golden necklace, golden everything, to go and worship the what? The golden God. If yours is silver, you dress up in silver jewelries to go and worship the silver God. Go back to your Bible. In Genesis 35, when Jacob told his people, submit your gods. You remember that? Rachel stole some gods from her father, the golden gods. And so he said, submit your gods. And what, were they, what did they submit along the God? They submit all their earrings and everything because it's the property of the idolatry. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is where jewelry using started. Worshipping the gods of gold, silver, diamond, and this. Is the out so the same thing. If you are going to worship the holy God, you are to worship him in what? In the beauty of what? Of holiness. Number two. Don't forget, Leviticus eleven forty four says, Be ye holy, for I am what? I'm holy. That's the, the reason, the first reason why holiness is important. Number two, Genesis 17, 1, God told Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. He told Israel, be ye holy for I am what? I am holy. He told Christian, as he which called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. For it is written, be ye holy for I am. So you see that holiness is God's demand from generation to generation from his people. You can't go with God if holiness is not there in your life. Number three, holiness is the condition for cordial relationship with God. For cordial relationship. When you look at the life of Enoch in Genesis 5, 22 to 24, and Noah in Genesis 6, 8 and 9. Let's read Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace is to make us holy, not to make us sinful. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. When you hear that word perfect, what's he talking about? Holiness. That's holiness. He was just and perfect in his generation. And Noah did what? Walk with God because he had the nature of God. He had that, that attribute of God that can make him relate with God cordially. People are running away from getting closer to God because of what he will be demanding from them. That's why today we have better Christians than closer Christians. How do I mean? Christians that want to get from God. God, give me. God, give me. Son, come close. Let me talk to you. Mm -mm. Leave me where I am. Just give me. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number four. Holiness is important. Because it is the basis for acceptable services to God. Your service without holiness is useless. Look at the, what the man of God was saying in the morning. The church in Ephesus, you remember the pastor was a laborious pastor. He said, I know thy zeal, thy labor, thy this, that is a bit, thou lackest one thing. One thing is missing. You have left your what? Your first love. 
And so that is recommended everything, every other thing he has done. Holiness is the condition for acceptable or basis for acceptable service to God. Psalm 24, verse 3 to 6, what does it say? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? That is to minister. Amen? He that hath clean hands and a word. That's what I was saying yesterday. Holiness must be outward and word and inward. That's the balance holiness. The holiness that you have, you are really holy. But somebody cannot approach you and say, please, can you pray for me? Why? Because the way you dress up yourself doesn't show you are a Christian. Whereas you are a good Christian. Hello? Somebody is he's in trouble. He wants to look for somebody to pray. He look at it and say, this one cannot be a Christian. Whereas you are a Christian. That's another form of hypocrisy. Shout hallelujah. So he, he said, he that have clean hands, and then a word, a pure heart. Our inward and outward life must reflect what? Holiness. Then he says, he that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, not using falsi falsified figures. Here and there, just like what the man of God have said the other time, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number five. <clears throat> Holiness is important. Because it is the means of preparing for the rapture. It is the means of. If you are expecting rapture, which will soon take place now, the way we are seeing things. Let me talk to Christian ministers. Begin to pack your loads. We have no more long time here with what is going on in the global world. Antichrist's way is fast opening. Tables is being set, are being set for the emergence of the Antichrist. So that's why we have to get ready. And if we want to get ready, holiness is the way. First John chapter 3. I read from verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3. And everyone that have this hope in him, what does he do? Purified himself. How? So Christ is the standard of our holiness. That's why a Christian minister must always ask himself, this thing, can Jesus do this? Because he's our model. He's our standard. He said, can Jesus do this? Can Jesus say this? Can Jesus dress this way? Can Jesus walk this way? Can Jesus go to this place? He said, Purify ourselves as he is pure. Because he is the one that is coming for us. We are his bride. Anything less than his own image in us, rejected. Praise God. Hallelujah. Finally, on that note, importance of holiness for Christian ministers and leaders. It is the key that opens the gate of heaven. Let's see Revelation 22. Verse 14 and 15, Revelation 22. In that Revelation 22, verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through what? The gates into the city. Another translation. Of that, verse 14 say, blessed are they that wash their garments. Because when you are obeying his word, what are you doing? You are washing your garment. To be cleansed with the washing of water by the word. Obedience to God means holiness. He said, for without our dogs, 
Dogs cannot enter that place. And sorcerers, and warmongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoso loveth, and do what? And make it a lie. You hear the pastor say somebody wanted to create, it, create life for him. And that is common everywhere. It's common now everywhere. People create life to get things, to get things done. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The first time I wanted to travel to the U.S., that was in the 80s. Somebody wants me to use another person's head. Shall be shaking. When I was just coming up in the Lord, I was supposed to work in Radio Nigeria. In Falomo at Lagos, I went there, and they said, can we create certificate for you that can qualify you for where we want you to work? I said, I don't want it. I would prefer to have what I am entitled to than to lie so I can get to what I want to get. If I lied and get these things, if Trump is somewhere, where am I going? I was preaching in Akure in a conference, and uh, I, I was to preach on repentance to, I mean, thousands of believers, believers and ministers. After the message, I left. One of the organizing pastors called me and said, Sir, crisis has started. <laughs> One man in that service is a Christian worker in his church. He, his church is also preaching holiness. But he's using his senior brother's certificate to work at Futa. He has to repent and go and resign and leave the work. Because except you repent, you shall all likewise repent. You may, you may be a minister or anything. That which is the word of God that God will judge with. Not your office. Not your title. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So at this level, let's be serious with ourselves. Holiness is not a joking matter. And many people are not ready for it. That's why people like us don't look for invitations. We don't look for a place to preach because it is not everything we are saying they want to accept. The moment Pastor Remy told me, that, I said, you know, you know, he said, that's what we want. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We won't hide the truth too, because we are not looking for money. I thank God for the life of my brother, for what he was saying the other time. You see, when you are doing the work of God because of honorarium, you are not doing the work of God, you are doing business. Yeah. See, several occasions, I went to Benway from Ibadan to Benway. I spent a lot of money to put fuel in my car to repair the car and to take to Benway. I finished my message in Benway. The person I went to that invited me to minister's conference started hiding. <laughs> started hiding. I didn't see his face. <laughs> Where is his brother now? No money to give me. So whereas that morning, the Holy Spirit said, whatever this, because it's my son in the Lord, whatever this man will give you, Use it as a sacrifice, as a contribution to his conference. I've only goes and settled that with me. And I'm not expecting anything. So he was now hiding. Then, mistakenly, we just saw ourselves. I said, ah, come now, ah, I've been looking for you. <laughs> when he saw me, he said, uh, he said, he said, he said, uh, I don't even know what to say. I said, what is that? He said, uh, they have used money to take care of the conference, and they didn't have anything to give me. I said, give me for what? I said, come. Anything you want to give me is a contribution. He fell down flat and, and prostrated. He said, thank you. I said, no, I didn't come here because of that. If I'm able to impact lives, my reward is in heaven. I think that's what I need. He was so happy. You see, it's not because of honorarium. It's because of the souls. 
and the kingdom. May God help us. Amen. Challenge of holiness in the 21st century. Are we ready for it? That's, the key. That's where we are going. Number one, the first challenge that is facing holiness today. Let's go back to that. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. This also know, this know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. What's the next thing? Stop there. The first challenge that holiness is facing today is challenge of selfishness and unconquered sin. Selfishness and unconquered besetting sins. There are two things that, uh, that is mentioned there. Number one, selfishness. Lovers of their own self. Two, covetousness. That is love of money. Why are people lying? Because they want to make money. Why are people cheating on others? Because they are selfish. So we see that carnality is the first greatest challenge against what? Holiness. Carnality. Selfishness. Wanting everything to belong to you alone and your family. So other could be deprived. Nobody that is selfish can be holy. A selfish man will never dream of holiness because everything he will do will be against holiness. The same thing, a covetous person, somebody who loves money. You know, we are, I was talking with the man of God the other time that many people that left Nigeria with the mind of they are going to serve God, when they get to America or Canada, they are serving gold. They are forgotten God. For us, seeing this kind of number of ministers in this place, I believe revival is happening here. Amen. And God will give you revival. Amen. Because we know where we have been to. Many, this side of, 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 of the world, people value dollar than God. For you creating time to be here, you will be rewarded. I know what I'm talking about. Some people have lost Jesus because of dollar. They have, many have sold Jesus because of dollars. Covetous. Many ministers can no more be truthful because they are looking for money. How can they be holy? That's why we have to overcome carnality, selfishness, covetousness. The Bible says lay aside Every weight and every sin that doth easily what beset us. Carnality. Some people are born again. They say they are saved, they, but they are not free from fornication. The love the, that the man of God was preaching the other time. I, may, maybe let me put more light on it too. Hello. Hi. You know there are three kinds of love. Who? Yes. Mm hmm. Hey Joe. <laughs> <laughs> there is love, there is love. <laughs> but love is different from love. You see, Greek gives us three words for love. Eros, phileo, agape. Eros is lust. Phileo is carnal. Agape is divine. That's what he's talking about. That's why they call it charity. That's agape, God's kind of love. Zoe. I mean, sorry. Agape, agape, yeah, agape. That came through Zoe. When you receive Zoe, Zoe produce what? Agape. Zoe is the life of God. And when it comes to you, it produces love of God in your heart. See, the love of God is being shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So it's not talking of love that will make you to be following another man's wife. 
Not, not lustful, not lustful love. It's God's kind of love. Unconditional love. May God help us. Amen. So today's Christianity is being done to satisfy self, not God. If you look at it very well. Christianity of today is being done to satisfy self. You go butter, my bread. You go sugar, my tea. You now so so wonder. Jesus did. If you no go butter my bread, I no go serve him again. No. <laughs> what if he, if he does not butter our bread and doesn't sugar our tea? Why are we serving him? For love's sake or for gain's sake? Number two, challenge. You see, we are in the minister's conference, so there are some revelations we are going to receive which is for us, and watch over it. The second challenge, let's pick it from 1 Timothy 4.1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Let me call it this way. Challenge of demonic infiltration and manipulation of the church. Demonic infiltration into the church and manipulation of the church. Some shall depart from the faith. Why? Because some spirit have entered into the church saying something else, teaching something else, in the, around 88, 89, I didn't know it was going to be serious, so I wasn't really taking date, but I knew it was around that time. I was just praying one day, God opened my eyes, I saw three spirits operating. God said, three spirits will begin to affect the church. I didn't know. I just called the pastors under me that time. I said, this is what God revealed to me. Oh, let's begin to pray. Oh, these three spirits will not come to our ministry. Oh, I didn't know it was the body of Christ. What are the spirits? Spirit of lust, spirit of offense, and spirit of error. Lost, offense, and error. I, need, I didn't know it was a serious thing. I just called the, the pastors. I said, oh, yeah, let's pray. This ministry, we don't want spirit of error. Look, look at error in the church today. Look at offense. This one has offended me. He has offended me. He has offended me. He didn't. He talked to me. He see my face. Things we need to overlook easily. We now hold on to it and make it an issue. Infiltration, demonic what? Infiltration into the church. Then error, error. All things that that really matters. We say it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Things that God will never take for granted. We take it for... Uh, see, that's why I'm correcting the, the choir. If we say God will not judge, and God decide to judge, you better be at the server side. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Who tells you it doesn't matter? All the things that people of God have held in esteem in those days, some people enter the church. And we don't know they are not from the kingdom of God. Demonic spirit infiltrating the church are raising false prophets in the church, false teachers, false ministers, and we never know them. We didn't know. Let me give you a few experiences. In Lagos, there is a church, a popular church, and one of the members went to a pastor in Ogun State. When, he, when she got there, the pastor was not around, but the wife was around. That's why a pastor's wife also must carry fire. Yeah. So by the time they were discussing, the lady began to shake. Before you know it, half fish, half human being. And the pastor's wife looked at the strange thing and said, the Lord rebuke you. She, Are you afraid? He said, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid because greater is he. The lady began to confess that 
in her own church alone, there were six from the marine world. And she's the choir leader of that church. I, I'm talking to you as ministers. You know, so there are some things you don't say. Are you hearing me? Six from the marine world in that single church. And she is the head of the choir in the church. He said, their mission on earth, you can't see them and not carry them if you are a man. Spotless. Beautiful. Attra attractive. The only thing they are sent to do on earth is to poor near all the billionaires. Are you getting what? To poor near all the billionaires. Anyone that sees them and carry them Within six months, all his fortune is gone. That's their own assignment. And they are in the church. And pastor cannot even design them. He's the head of the choir. So such person, now they call him a minister. They call her a minister. And she will come there and minister and, and dress anyhow. And dress. they say, my, my sister, this type of dress, does it doesn't matter. This is God. In the house of God. It's here, it's here. It's here, it's here. You don't know who is talking. You think it's spiritual. You don't know it's demonic. And this has spoiled the church of God. Unknown elements in the church that are corrupting holiness. That's why we have to be watchful. Another one in Edo, in, in, in Edo, Edo or Delta. She's in that church. Ministering like hell. Ministering. Very powerful minister, a sister. And when she minister in songs, everywhere be vibrating. So that day, a guest minister came, sat down like this. The sister kept on ministering. And the pastor was seeing snake. Snake coiling on the mic. Ah. She will minister. Before that time, pastor will need and say, lay hands on me. This your anointing is powerful. If pastor is going to program um, to, uh, pray, to go and pray for somebody, he carry her along, pray, lay, she start the hand, and healing will take place. Pastor has been carried away, L giving heed to seducing what spirit and doctrines of devil. That day, the pastor said, "Can I pray for you, sister?" When he came, came to the podium, he said, "Oh, you minister powerfully. Please, can you come forward and pray?" Sister refused. She didn't come home. Uh, pastor said, Sister Lagbaja, she be you are praying for me. Come out, let's pray for you also. You need she refused. Oh. After a long time, she just reluctantly moved out. And by the time the minister said, In the name of Jesus, she fell down and became serpent. Wow. Everybody found, found their level. <laughs> Everybody found their level. Everybody found their level. Through the window, through the door, through the Serpent. And it became a struggle between the pastor and the serpent. In the name of Jesus. In the, in the name of Jesus. At a point in time, she turned around and became stuck naked. And started running. She ran to her house in the village, in the town. When she got there, she locked up. The youth started pursuing her. When they got to the house, locked up, the landlord said they should break the door. Ordinary pain was not found in the room. And she has been a powerful minister. That is how far the church has gone astray. That's why. It's not every teaching we can listen to. It's not every minister we can believe. Go back to the word of God. That's the challenge. Some people are saying, this is righteousness. This is holiness. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God doesn't count on that. They know where they are talking from. And we know where we are talking from. Challenge of holiness. Demonic infiltration and manipulation. He said, you, you have a prophetess among you. What does he call the prophetess? Jezebel. But they were calling her what? Prophetess. And God knew she's what? She's Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel was working in her. 
and she was the one controlling the church. May God have mercy. Amen. Number three, challenge of misleading knowledge and worldly philosophies. If you look at Daniel 12.4, the Bible says, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the, the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall what? Shall be increased, shall be increased. If you don't know there, where there is knowledge today, go to Google. Google tells you everything you want to know, both good and bad. You want to kill yourself, Google will teach you how to kill yourself. Anything you want to do. And this is really affecting holiness. Sometimes as you are preaching righteousness, the person you are preaching to, they, are Google, they Google your message. They begin to Google what you are saying. And somebody will be telling them, that's what they are saying. It's not as, as, it's not as bad as they are saying it. Too. God didn't take it as serious as that. Too. You'll be countering what you are saying. Because of misleading what? Knowledge. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 and 21, let's hear what it says. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have heard concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. People today are preaching things that are misleading others from the faith. I was telling some of our brethren in Nigeria, I said, you want to be holy. You went and read Yoruba in the university. <laughs> you will make incantation. Yeah. You will do share. You will do a giddy. You will do a yado. Is that good for a child of God? <laughs> Communing with the devil? And they tell you, whether you're a prophet, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a reverend, it doesn't matter. You have to go through them. You have to meet Babalawu and learn how to make incantation. How can we be holy and be making incantation? The Bible says, let no man spoil you with vain philosophy. With philosophies and vain deceits. There are a lot of philosophies now that goes on in the world. You see, Time will not permit me. If I want to talk on these philosophies alone, it will take our time. There is what you call modernism. Modernism in the 17th century is the one that gives birth to atheism, Darwinism, who tells us that man evolved. He was not created. And one says there is no God. They gave, it gave birth to secularism. We don't need God if we have our five senses. That's what led America to where it is today. When that one is no more working, there is postmodernism. That's where they brought in the, the, the Eastern religion into focus. Because they know secularism doesn't pay them again. Then they want something better. Then they bring in yoga. They bring in all this exaccentric perception, this transcendental meditation. This, and they say, they say, they say it's not, Jesus is not the only way to God. Every way is way. Pluralism. And this is working against holiness. But when you say, without holiness, no matter some people say, no, if our Lord G also leads to God. <laughs> if our Lord <laughs> If our Oriku. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. These are challenges. Praise the Lord. Are we getting something out of this? Number four, challenge. Challenge. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 7.29. Lo, this only have I found, that God had made man upright, but they have sought out many what? Are you there? <laughs> many what? But they have sought out many what? That is our problem now. 
That is challenge of scientific innovations and technology. Scientific innovations and technology. You see, look at scientific in innovations and technological inventions. Yes, scientific innovations and technological inventions. They are serious threat to holiness. Whether we believe it or not. They are good things, but they bring bad influence. They bring corrupt influence to the society, which is affecting the church and affecting our holiness. Look at it now. Those days, when you are talking about um, masturbation, pornography, it takes a long way to get there. But now pornography is on your finger. It's on your, it's on your palm there. Everything evil is there. People that doesn't do pornography those days, they are doing it easily now. Because even when you don't invite it, they, they, prop, they pop up to you. Yeah. <laughs> By fire. It's a challenge. It teaches you masturbation. They show you a lot of things you don't want to see. You open your Facebook, somebody open everything, doesn't wear anything, stuck naked, and do like this. Ah, Lord! Ah. Am I saying something? It's happening. That's the challenge we face from technological inventions. Now our children doesn't want to read the Bible again. They just want to be on the internet. Just surfing the internet, surfing the internet. And you know what? They go into unholy sites, which is corrupting them every word, every day. So when you talk about holiness, they are not interested. And on that side, there are some demonic sites from where they are selling their soul to the devil, free of charge. It's a challenge. You said children are not listening. The Bible have told us that in the last days, very long time shall what? He said they shall be disobedient to what? Why? Because of two influences. One, demonic influence. The spirit are now working in the children of disobedience. Then, technological influence. Because of what they have been exposed to on the, on, the, on the net, it has influenced them wrongly. And we parents doesn't know. When they are covenanting their life to the devil, press the button, say yes, submit. <laughs> and they are, their soul are lost. It's a challenge. May God help us. Amen. Number five. Challenge. Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, who is he? Enemy. Is the enemy of God. That is challenge of worldly distractions and social corruption. Challenge of worldly distractions and social corruption. You see, I was saying yesterday that instead of the church to be modeling the world, who is modeling the church? The world is now modeling the church. Our brothers want to bar barb their hair like a footballer or like a cowboy or like a boxer. No brother wants to be like Jesus again. Our sisters want to look like a, cel a celebrity, not, not Christ-like. That's worldly attractions. Why are, we taking our, why are we taking our model from the world? Why not Christ? Looking unto Jesus, the word, author and finisher of our faith. Why are we following trends? Hello? Anything that we see on the, on, on the net, on, on the television, now becomes our model. If they begin to bob long hair in television, you see it in the church. If they begin to grow beard, 
On television, you see it in the church. People begin to grow beard. Why do we follow what they do there? Why can't you be a Christian following Christ? If they begin to open, their uh, clothes begin to open every part of the body. You see Christian sisters also. Open, even on the altar, we open everything also. So Sometimes we are going to the altar. Almost every part of the body of our sister, they are outside. Why? That's ungodly. The Bible, God warned them in the book of Exodus. He said when they are going to the altar, their nakedness must be what? Must be covered. Must not be seen. But today we see... So we see ties, we see uh, the laps of our sister on the altar. That's ungodly. Why? Because we want to, we want to trend. We want, we want to be like. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Challenge of worthy distraction. Second one, social corruption. Social corruption. You see, because everybody is doing it, let us also do it. Because the false figure, falsified figures, let's falsify figures. Because they tell lies, let also tell lies. She became a child, you run, you run, you run, you run, you run. Let me just go down. God will not count it for you like that, too. Lie to God is what? It's lie. And every liar belongs to who? The devil, which is the father of lies. No! In the days of Noah, that's what killed all of them. The Bible says, the world is corrupt before me. And everybody's joining cor corruption. Both the church people and the non-church people, they were joining. Noah preached, preached, preached. Corruption he didn't allow them to listen to him. You see, who will follow your God that will not allow us to go and take our passport with lies? Will not allow us to go and falsify everything? Will not allow us to, to tell lies to get what we want to get? And so they forsook Noah and his family. They made it a family church. Nobody followed them because of corruption. May God deliver us. Amen. Like our brother was saying the other time, if I say people should raise up, uh, uh, God needs to help us now to rectify our ways because things have gone bad, even in Christendom. Like he was saying, there are many things you'll be deprived of if you want to live a holy life. Many things that you can get easily if you can just tell a what? A lie of falsification. I mean, just change some things. One of my church member was, about some times ago, was telling me that Eskisa, he wanted to make some correction. He said he, 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 he has changed the date of his, his date of birth. And now he want, he's now in holiness. He now wants to be holy and be truthful. He, and he want to travel out. He said, what? I said, well, you know what? You will go back to the passport office. Go and correct everything. He said he has, he has done that of his place of work. He said he remained out of life. As you will go and pay for it too. He went and paid for it. He paid a lot of money to reverse it. But now his conscience is clear. So if trumpet sound, he's ready to go. It's as costly as that. Because social corruption is, is just trying to corrupt every, everybody, especially the church people. So that before the trumpet sound, you will not be blameless. Before the trumpet sound, you will be corrupted. There will be stain in your garment. And with the, without spot or wrinkle or blemish, that's the people is coming for. Challenge number six. God will help us. Challenge, let's look at Luke 21, 25, and 26. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea roaring, I mean the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be what? Shall be shaken. We're talking about challenge of socio-economic crisis. Which is making us to look for money by all what? By all means. Challenge of socio-economic crisis. He said, there shall be distress of nations. Everywhere now there is economic what? 
distress. There's economic distress. There's economic distress. Even in America, people are now looking for two jobs, three jobs, mortuary and everything. <laughs> By all means. No time for God. No time for church. No time for anything. Say, ah, you know, they, they, they have increased my rent. They have increased my, my, my house uh, payment. They have increased this and that. And, we have to, and I have to send money back to Nigeria. So we must go to Moshuari to get it. <laughs> May God deliver us. All these are challenges. That is making people to find it difficult to live a what? A holy life. The last challenge is challenge. Let's look at First Corinthians chapter one, verse twelve. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twelve. What does he say? He said. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. <laughs> Chapter 3, verse 4. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? The last challenge I'm talking about here is challenge of fractionalized or sectionalized Christianity. Challenge of sectionalized Christianity. Pastor Remy was talking on Wednesday, if I remember, he was talking about uh, some people say holiness, some people say uh, faith. This and that, that is supposed not to be so. As if he has preempted what I'm trying to say now. Because I have, I have to bring it to light. That You see, the Bible says they were steadfast in what? Apostle doctrine, one, then in prayers, in fellowship, and then in breaking of bread. Do you know that the church has divided into five streams? Five streams. Five streams. Number one, apostles' doctrine. We have the evangelicals. The evangelicals. Who only the word. The word. Evangelical base their own on what? The word. Anything apart from the word, nothing. The word. Evangelism. I mean, just evangelism, preaching the word, teaching the word. Other things may be going wrong. But the, the word. We have the group we call the contemplative. These are prayer people. Don't forget in the early church, prayers. So some people carry the apostles' word doctrine. They go with it. And that carry what? Prayers. See? It is prayer. Pray for 24 hours. Pray on the mountain, in the valley. Lock up yourself. You must not see sun. You must not see moon. All their own is what? You say, what of the world? You say, ah, oronyake kirini. Oronyake kirini. <laughs> and they pray, pray, and going out of heaven. They pray themselves out of heaven because they are not following the word of God. Bring in a lot of rituals and everything. Say, Allah, do it to a dua. She to a dua for it. She will leave. Work of the prophets. Prophetic ritual. Because they only focus on what? On prayers. The third group, we call them the holiness. The holiness group. Those ones base their own on virtuous life. Live a life of what? Holiness. What about uh, prayer? It doesn't matter. Just be what? Just be holy. Ah, what of the, what of mercy? What of love? You say, ah. Anybody who doesn't follow holiness will not get to heaven. I will never drink their water. I will never eat their bread. We never. 
because they are not holy like us. Yeah, yeah. Then the other group said, what is our own? Penti, Pentecostal charismatic. Say, what of who didn't say? No, 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 it doesn't matter. Speak in tongue. You're speaking tongue. Speak in tongue. Go in the spirit. Fall under the anointing. That takes care of everything. What of the word of God? Yes, the word will be on the Holy, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fire, fire, fire. Holy Ghost fire. That's the way they follow. Holiness, they are not inclined. They, they don't need holiness. They can do like Jezebel and come and say, God said unto me. God has, uh, Sister, you didn't look like Jesus. He said, it doesn't matter. I have the Holy Ghost in me. He's talking to me. If the Holy Ghost is in you, he should change you to Jesus. The last group, we call them the Orthodox. Those who focus on social welfare and charity. They can go to the village and plant borehole there. They will never preach gospel to them. They just give people food, give them clothes, give them education, give them, they never give them Christ. This is how the church has been fractionalized. So when you are preaching holiness, God, uh, evangelical say it doesn't work. Uh, prayer say it is prayer that we need. We are asked, all must come together. We must hold the word. We must be prayerful. We must be holy. We must be Pentecostal. We must be, we must be good, charitable, bless people, be a blessing. We must be philanthropic. All these things is what makes Christianity Christianity. But we've sectionalized it. That's a challenge to holiness in the 21st century. People of God, how do we overcome this challenge as we want to go and pray? Are we ready for that? How to overcome the challenges of holiness today? Number one, <laughs> you have to be convinced that holiness is an indispensable virtue in relating with God. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. There must be conviction that holiness is an indispensable virtue in relating with God. That's Hebrews 12, 14. And the Bible tells us, he that have a clean heart and a what? And a pure heart is the only one that can stand in the holy place. Number two, be determined to remain in the way of holiness everywhere, every time, and in everything. Just like we had in the morning that we should abide in faith, in love, in hope. We should also abide in what? In holiness. I say everywhere. Some of us, what we will not do in Nigeria, we are now doing it in America. Has God in Nigeria changed in America? What we don't believe at home, which we know, this is the word, I can't do that. Now we come to America, everybody is doing it here. I say, is God of Nigeria different from that of, Ni of America? No. You should remain holy everywhere. Daniel remained holy even in the city of what? Babylon, which is totally ungodly. He said, Daniel purposed in his heart not to do what? Not to defile himself in the community of the Babylonians, like American community. He refused to compromise. We should still, yeah. America is not the standard of God for people's life. The word of God is international standard for everybody. And in any context, word of God is the standard. We don't follow any nation or any group of people to do anything. No. Follow the word. Because God will not judge you because you are in America. He will judge you according to the word of God. So, we be determined. Like, I thank God for the life of our brother who was talking in the morning that he, he, he has suffered many things. Man, that's his, how it's going to be. Look at Daniel. He had all the opportunities to enjoy. He refused to enjoy them because he knew involving in this thing will lure him into idol worship. He knew the food he would, that we bring to the presidential cafeteria is already sacrificed to idol first before bringing it to them to eat. 
And he said, no, I won't defile myself. Let me lose every opportunity. And he didn't lose anything. Shout hallelujah. Number, uh, the last one. Pray always for grace and power to overcome all challenges against holy living. Pray always. What does the Bible say in Matthew eleven twelve? And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take it by what? By force. Let's read together Jude 1, 20 before I leave this place. Jude 1, 20. Prayer, prayer, prayer. We need grace. We need power. But we have to pray for it. Jude 1, 20. Are you there? But ye beloved, what should you do? Building up yourself. On what? Most holy faith. How do you do that? In the Holy Ghost. You must be praying in the Holy Ghost every day that God grace to do what? To remain. Let me tell you something. I came into preaching of holiness in 1976. Why? That night, I was talking with a friend on, mission, on the mission field. And when we're talking, we're talking about this, uh, this same time. We're doing eschatology on the mission field. Where they, they, just two of us. So as we're me meditating and we're searching the scripture, our heart was burning. Hey, Jesus will soon come. As, as, as 76, we thought Jesus would have come before even 2000. So then, that night I said, Lord, what is it that will not let me make heaven? Let me know when rapture comes. What will hinder me from making heaven? I slept that night. And I saw that I saw myself in the dream. There were two paths before me. One to the left, one to the right. And I was now standing in the middle. As one leg here, one leg here. Where do I reach? So the Holy Spirit said, it's either you be on the Broadway or on the narrow way. You can't mix the broad and the narrow together. Holiness is holiness. Worldliness is worldliness. If you are mixing worldliness with holiness, you get nowhere. Let's rise up. I want to be more holy in my heart. I want to be more holy in my heart, I want to be more holy. In my heart, I want to be more holy. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart, oh, in my heart. Oh Lord, in, in a my heart, Lord, I, I want to be more holy in, in a my heart. Can we sing it one more time? I, I want to be more holy in a my heart. I want to be more holy. In my heart. One more time. I want to be more holy. In my heart. I want to be more holy. In my heart. In my heart. In my heart. to prayer. Lord, help me to overcome all the challenges against holiness. Help me to overcome. Give me the grace and power to overcome challenges against holiness in the 21st century. Let's talk to God.